Painkiller is one of Netflix's most recent releases, and it's safe to say that it's most definitely a powerful show. Focusing on the opioid epidemic, and more specifically the introduction of OxyContin into the market, this show focused on how the drug made the Sackler family mega rich, whilst in the process ruining hundreds of thousands of lives and it corrupting the minds of their salespeople, ultimately turning them into emotionless robots with death on their hands. With there being three individual stories underlying the harsh reality of what actually occurred, let's recap, break down, and explain all that there was to take away from this show including the importance of the smoke alarm. Here is Painkiller Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The Ending Explained Throughout the entirety of this show, we had a few different stories that were all ultimately connected to the wider truth that was at play. Richard Sackler and the creation of OxyContin was the drug that was essentially a Schedule II narcotic that caused an epidemic amongst communities. I'll start with how the story ended for Glenn and his family. Glenn had an addiction to OxyContin following the accident that happened to him right at the very beginning, so much so that it ultimately destroyed his family life, his business, and he was sleeping rough due to being cast aside and being deemed unhelpable. This part of the story represented the victims in the crisis in real life, and he represented one of those 300,000 people that had died due to OxyContin. Watching this one story unfold was heartbreaking to witness, we saw that after being 30 days clean and getting his life back together and getting closer to his wife, he ended up relapsing and dying the very next day, showing that even once off of it for an elongated period of time, it was easy to get your hands on and relapse. Glenn dying led to multiple people being impacted by it and the repercussions being felt all across the family, something which was present in real life. It was something that you could just get over the counter and get prescribed to you with trust being put in your doctor, so it showed that the chain in the industry in itself at the time was responsible for the damage that was caused and the addiction that was formed by many people at the time. This was the pain arm of the story. When we look at the story that involved Shannon and Britt, I thought this was a really interesting arm to it. This side represented pleasure. We were told early on that life was a cycle of pain and pleasure, and this show very much represented that with these two sides of it. Shannon was an individual who could have well been one of those girls that ended up dead due to OxyContin, and I feel as though, despite it not being made apparent in the show, it was hinted towards. We saw what her life was like before. She wasn't well off and was no different to the young girls that she was seeing use it. However, she was a sales rep that knew that what she was doing was wrong, but was fine in knowing that she was contributing to the death of many people, as long as it gave her full pockets with cash. She was essentially a dealer, but one that wasn't a criminal, which is just crazy to think was actually a thing, but she did come to her senses in the end. With Edie's brother being in jail for being a dealer on the streets, it showed that both him and Shannon were no different, yet they were treated extremely differently in society. The weight of the show reached its heaviest when Edie was saying how once herself and Brownlee had everything that they needed to take Friedman, Udell, and Goldenheim to court, a phone call overnight dismantled it all and a settlement was agreed, meaning that no criminal convictions would be faced. It showed the corrupt nature of the people at the top, and that the connections were what essentially went in all of their favours. This ultimately resulted in Edie leaving her role as she came to realise that the bad guys would always win, and that there was no point in fighting for something that was always going to be an uphill battle, with a result that didn't go in your favour. The final thing that we saw in the show was several years later. We saw that Richard Sackler was older, and it was intercut with the vision of his uncle that was present throughout the entirety of the show. The individual that cared about legacy and his family name far outlasting any of his nearest descendants' lives. We saw that in 2019, Purdue Pharma filed for bankruptcy, and they had to pay a settlement of $6 billion. As this was being shown to us, we saw that Richard's uncle was on top of him, beating him, and he was stating that he destroyed the family legacy that he created, and that the family name would now only ever be known for the drug that destroyed the families of over 300,000 people. With none of the Sacklers ever being convicted for their involvement and the reparations basically being paid out through interest in their investments, it's something that they said they'll never truly feel, so it doesn't feel like justice was truly served in that sense. The final thing that Richard and us as the audience heard as he walked off was the smoke alarm that was ever present throughout the entirety of the show, which leads me on to my next point. What was the meaning of the smoke alarm? The smoke alarm was something that was on my mind for the entirety of the show, 
Richard Sackler was an individual that whenever he was in his own home, he would hear a smoke alarm going off. Whether it be in the middle of the night, if he was just sitting there, or if he was participating in conversation. It was a noise that he could just forever hear, and even if the smoke alarms were removed, he would continue to hear it. I think there is some importance behind the smoke alarm and the use of it. I think it stands for the fact that he knew that the way that he had made his money was wrong, and despite not showing it externally, inside of his mind, even if it was subconsciously, it was scratching away at him. Hence why the smoke alarm was used, a sound that is so annoying and is impossible for it to just drift into the background. There were never any tells on the outside that he felt bad about the damage that he'd caused due to the lying and the deceiving of the individuals in the entire pharmaceutical industry, but we saw that he was an individual that saw his dead uncle appearing in front of him on multiple occasions and was described as being a strange individual. So the person would have been fully capable of imagining this sound. It represented a guilty conscience, but like I said, the fact it was a smoke alarm and would be a sound that was always present in the background and something that he was hunting for meant that he wasn't even fully aware. Or on the other side, it could have meant that he was paranoid and the sound represented the fact that he couldn't shake the feeling that he would one day be punished. With it being right at the end, it could also mean that it's something that he's just going to have to live with. Overall review. I thought this show was really well done. It was heartbreaking watching the short segments at the start which had families of individuals that had a death that was directly linked to OxyContin and it hammered home the fact that what we were watching was actually real and happened not that long ago at all. Pain and pleasure were the two main things that I took away from this and it was definitely ingrained within the show's core. We would often see Glenn in pain and being addicted to OxyContin but the pleasure and enjoyment of life came from Shannon as she was off partying and living the high life whilst buying expensive things and living in a penthouse, all at the expense of the people in pain. It showed the polar opposite and the contrast of the two different sides of the opioid crisis. People were profiting and succeeding and others were having their lives destroyed. This was also apparent when we saw that some scenes would be merged with Richard Sackler and his team too, as they were doing their best to blame it on what they described as the lower class citizens for using the painkiller not as described and for recreational use. The story was told through the use of Miss Edie Flowers, who was an investigator who was trying to uncover the case, and I thought that was a really good way for us to have the events painted out to us, as she was heavily involved at that time and on the side of the law that wanted to bring them down. The story where we were witnessing firsthand how OxyContin impacted a family with Glenn was one that was utterly heartbreaking to witness. We saw a man be prescribed it with the promise that it would just solve his pain, but it became the very thing that destroyed his family's life and ultimately claimed his own due to the addictive nature of it. The moment of realization that made my stomach drop was that if Lily had have just let him stay over that night, then he wouldn't have relapsed when he walked into his neighbor's room. Six episodes was the perfect amount of time for this show. I was hooked at the end of every episode and I didn't want to stop watching it. The fact that it was a true story made it all the more gripping and made the severity of the situation genuinely feel like a heavy load. It showed the corrupt nature of the elite, how they didn't care about the people at the bottom and how they viewed them just like the mice that they originally tested on. They don't see people below them as human. They never did. And the death of over 300,000 people is something that will weigh heavy on their minds as a consequence of that. It's utterly heartbreaking and it's just so hard to believe that this actually happened. And the fact that in only 2019 was when it was first properly dealt with. But like they said in the show, they probably won't even fill the billions of dollars that need to be paid. Telling this story of the opioid epidemic through the use of a drama was something that I thought was more effective than if it had have just been a documentary. So Netflix did a good job with that. This was definitely a powerful show, and one that I didn't even expect to be as good as what it was. So, there you have it. Painkiller Ending Explained. What did you think of this show? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.